All right, so I have an ice machine today that's not making any ice. So let's go see what's going on. All right, so here's the unit in question. Fire up and we get this red danger light. So let's go figure out what that's for. All right, so let's full first pull out a schematic and let's figure out why this red light comes on. So I'm actually gonna have to use the wiring diagram and the schematic because the wording is kind of funny and it's not drawn the way I like it. So if I come here, it's showing me yellow, which is the full bin light. That's number one. Number two showing red, but breaker, which makes no sense. So obviously something lost in translation there. So let's come over to our schematic. And here it's a, they show green is the light for on, two is yellow full, and then three is thermic gear motor. Okay, so that's telling me it's probably some kind of safety for the gear motor something in that loop okay so let's go ahead and identify our load here then so that red light is number two right here which for the moment we'll call red breaker so let's just go through how this guy gets power okay so let's start with the easiest part so we'll start working backwards we come through here straight shot to our neutral through our on off switch so that's good and easy now the other side of the circuit right here this is where things get confusing because if you look at it, this is connected here, comes through our DIS, which DIS is labeled as circuit breaker for the gear motor. So we come through our circuit breaker and then we come through here and now we have a double neutral. So obviously this thing can never light up. We have two neutrals, okay? So this makes no sense. But if you look at it more carefully, if we come through here and we come to PT, so PT is gonna be motor thermal protection. If this is open, okay, that means we're not getting power to this side. Okay, so when you look at this, at first glance it looks like, hey, we're never gonna get power to this light, it makes no sense. But if we follow this backwards, and we're gonna start seeing that we're gonna actually back feed. Okay, so we're gonna take our L1, through our switch, we're gonna to come to our L1 on our contactor coil. This is gonna bump up to our T1. T1 is gonna be our start timer. So we're gonna come through our timer contacts, come down around here, and A1 coil is gonna be hot, okay? So how does A2 get hot? And this is where things get really confusing, so I'll try to explain this as best as I can. But let's follow A2. So we come through our PS, LW, and TS, which is probably our safety loop. So high pressure thermostat. <clears throat> our water low level float switch. And then TS is going to be our... Uh, our bins full. Okay, so if this safety loop's closed, we're going to come back around here. We're going to come down through here. We're going to come through the light. We're going to come through this switch, and we're going to loop all the way back around to the neutral. So this neutral right here is actually coming through, and it's going to feed our coil. Okay? So this is where things are going to get a little bit complicated. So let's just remove some of this stuff here. All right, so basically what happens here, if this switch right here is open, our thermal overload for the gear motor, okay, we actually start to back feed through this coil. Okay, this A1 actually comes through to here to A2 because our neutral did not come around. And then we come through our safety loop and just like that, look at that. Now we have our hot and our neutral and our lights turning on. So this concept's a little bit difficult to grasp at first, but we're back feeding through the coil because this switch right here is open. Okay, so that's kind of our hint here. The only way for this to turn on, okay, this light here to turn on is we most likely have a situation here with this PT, which is our thermal overload for the motor, that gear motor. 
All right, so first thing I want to do is kind of draw out how this schematic works really quickly. So um, our L1 comes through here. This is our whole safety circuit. It's going to feed 97, 95, 96, and then our A2 coil. So this one's kind of backwards. Usually A1's your L1, but that's fine. Make no difference to us. And then our neutral is going to come through. We're going to come through our TEM, which is our timer. Those contacts close. We're going to come to our coil. And that's how we close the, the circuit for our contactor coil. So all these safeties have to be closed in order for that to happen. And then obviously our timer has to be closed as well. Okay, so let's go investigate um, if we have power to the contactor coil. So first thing I'm going to go check is A1 to A2. Let's see if we have power right here. All right, so let's check across our coil here, and we have zero volts, no voltage at the coil. So let's go see what's going on. All right, so we got zero volts here. So let's just draw what we know. The neutral's coming through. Our timer, I'm good on this circuit. Don't need to worry about this. Okay, so now I'm worried about my hot side, so my L1. So I'm just going to start working backwards from here. So first point that I'm interested in is 95 to 96. So what I'm going to do is test the cross for potential difference. Okay, so zero volts would indicate that the switch is most likely closed. Um, and if we get zero volts, we'll test 95 to neutral to make sure we do have 120. And then 120 volts across 95 and 96 would indicate an open switch. All right, so let's go check here across 95 and 96. This switch should be closed, so we're expecting to get zero volts here. Let me get my leads in there. All right, we're good. 114 volts. All right, so across 95 and 96, we have 120 volts for potential difference. That's telling me this circuit is open. So next thing I want to check, I just want to make sure we have power at 95. So we're going to check across 95 and our A1 coil and we have 114 volts. So that tells me we have power at 95. So we can now complete this circuit. And we know the issue is right here between 95 and 96. So this thing's written... This schematic is written funny, but uh, 95 and 96 is actually your contacts for this overload, okay? So um, this overload right here is in the open position. So let's go ahead and see if we can get it reset. All right, so this little red tab here, you should be able to push it down. And if you look inside, there's a little red tab that should push from the right side to the left side. You can see that thing ain't budging. And then we'll just compare it here. So see the red tab is on the right hand side and on the new one the tab's on the left hand side. Um, so this guy is not resettable. I cannot get it to reset. So we're going to go ahead and change out this overload. Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead here and hit fast forward. Um, there's a lot of wires here going on, so just make sure you're taking your pictures before you start, after. And uh, usually these switches can be reset, so we're going to have to figure out why this thing blew. And is there a problem with the motor? What's going on? I don't know. So let's get this changed first and go from there. Alright, so we got that uh, overload replaced. Let's go ahead and plug her back in. And let's see if that red light goes away. Let's see if we did our due diligence here and get the result we want. So I'm going to turn it on and the light's off, that little red light. It looks like it's on from this angle. 
I'm just going to show you from the back here that is in fact off it's just coming through on uh, on my light but you can see from the back here the lights definitely off the LED so we are all good here um, we're gonna carry on with some more testing so the unit actually did not turn on here um, I have a timer here okay and the switch is open on the timer you can see it's set to 10 minutes okay so if we test across potential difference it tells us the switch is open okay all right so um, as you can see there our timer motor not closing so let's just draw the circuit really quickly so 95 to 96 is now closed okay we're all good through here our A2 side is hot and then our neutral okay we're open through here okay so we're gonna go close that switch right now uh, we can do that through the dial on the on the little timer there's a dial okay we're gonna set it to like five seconds just so we can um, we don't have to wait the 10 minutes here all right so let's just go ahead here and move the timer I'm gonna put it to 10 seconds so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and we fire up zero volts across the switch that tells me the timer has closed the contacts have made all right so now the next thing we want to check is the motor okay is the motor drawing too much amperage is that why we blew the previous overload okay so we just want to cover all our bases here so at startup you saw I got 3.5 amps for like man not even half a second which is fine we can go up for about half a second and then we're chilling around 2.3 amps okay so I'm gonna run it for about 10 minutes and we're back I'm still chilling around 2.27 amps okay so that tells me the motors not over amping now if you look here carefully it's set to 2.2 amps the overload and look at that making some beauty ice ready to make some margaritas here actually this is for like a sports physio thing so if you see the bins a little bit dirty I'm gonna get them to sanitize and clean it all out but uh, they're literally using it for therapy so obviously cleanliness is an issue but not as much because no one's drinking this ice but we are making ice so we are all good here last thing we're gonna do here is set the overload from 2.2 to the max which is about 3.5 I don't want to get the nuisance trips and then also set your timer back to 10 minutes and we're all good here all right so a little ice machine there but as you can see sometimes the schematic and the wiring diagram can be a little bit confusing and you got to put them both together I couldn't figure out how that light was back feeding just through the schematic I tried to draw the lines over and over again so sometimes you just got to kind of piece things together and even the wording the translation was really funny uh, one was showing that it was a red breaker when in fact it was a light so sometimes you just got to think outside the box, piece things together, start drawing your lines on the schematics, start working backwards. I probably spent a good like 10 minutes figuring out how that schematic works. But once I saw the schematic works, I was able to pinpoint immediately where the fault was.